I grew up in the bustling city of Kuala Lumpur. My childhood is filled with memories of magical aromas and intense Malaysian flavours that flowed out of my mother's kitchen. While I now call Australia home, my taste buds are still quintessentially Malaysian. Malaysia is the cultural melting pot of Southeast Asia. It's a place where Chinese, Malay and Indian cultures collide to create this unique fusion that is Malaysian cooking. Simple, fast and generally inexpensive. With a little bit of know-how, it's easy to create authentic Malaysian recipes at home. Rendang, rendang, call it what you want. To me, it's succulent beef curry, dry curry, intensely Malaysian. Uh, and I'm going to show you a cheat's way of making the perfect beef rendang. Now, we're going to start with some beef chuck steak. We're going to mix that in with half a can of coconut. Just to bring it to boil. With some beef stock. And just for some aromats, we are going to add cinnamon stick and two star anise. Now we're going to put the lid on, but we're going to leave it slightly ajar, uh, just so there's enough steam that sort of comes through and we don't want to overcook the beef. Now in terms of the type of meat that I'm using or the choice cut that I'm using for the beef, the reason why I'm using chuck steak is because it is a cheaper cut of meat and you're cooking for a long time. So you don't need good quality meat because you're breaking down the meat. Um, so think about that when you're actually cooking your curry. If you don't like beef, this recipe works well with chicken as well. Um, and that's fantastic. Now we're going to make a little bit of a spice paste. Um, we've got some garlic and Asian shallots in there. We've got some red chilli dried, soaked until it's softened um, and then drained. We've got a lemongrass Lemongrass, very versatile. Um, we use it a lot in our curries. Uh, and we only use the white part of the stalk. Um, for the stem, for the green part, don't throw it out. Just bruise it, like so. Um, and you can actually flavour your teas. Or it works well um, as a brush as well for when you're marinating. So it gives it that extra sort of flavour. Um, and I'm all for using anything from head to toe, really. Um, so we are putting that in there and we are going to blitz it to make a paste. Now that's done. That we're going to leave for an hour to simmer. So when we come back, you'll see that it'll all come together and the meat will be slightly coloured um, and then we'll do the rest of the process. This is looking good. So this has been simmering for an hour. So we'll set that aside, maybe over low heat, while we fry the paste. Now, as you can see, it's a fairly rough paste. You can make it a lot finer. I like a little bit of texture in my, my spice mix. So let that fry up. Now, this is magic because you don't have to slave away in the kitchen for hours and hours making the perfect rendang mix. Um, I always believe in cheating with stuff of good quality and believe me, this is one of them. So we need a whole jar. It is one of the milder curries. It is uh, a Malay influence, uh, not as spicy as a lot of the Indian based curries. So I urge you to try it if you have not. Um, it's a fairly popular Malaysian dish uh, and quite versatile in terms of what protein you can use. We will add the paste through. Now we have the leftover coconut milk. We're going to add that in and let that simmer for a good 40 minutes. Now while that's simmering, Let's talk about the kaffir lime leaves. So these are the additional ingredients that we're adding through the rendang once it's done. So kaffir lime leaves are fantastic. So if you break one and smell it, it smells uh, really, really citrusy. And I'm rolling them up as if you are rolling a piece of tissue paper, I guess. And what we're going to do is we're going to finally shred this. Now that has been simmering for a good 
40 minutes. Look how thick it is. Love this. Now, just as a final step, we are going to add in some kaffir lime leaves and just a little bit of desiccated coconut. Mix that through. And that, my friends, is your rendang. Oh my gosh, let's serve this up. The beef would have had enough time to sort of break apart and look at the gravy. It's really nice and thick. You can take this further if you like, but I like my rendang just a tad on the saucy side. Now, trust me, it never photographs well, but you know, to me, a rendang is not about a good picture, it's about good taste. And this is perfect for your midweek meal. So give it a try, you won't be disappointed. is this great culture in Malaysia where it's Muslim Indian and they are very famous for making their rotis and roti is not unfamiliar to a lot of us here I can imagine um, but there's an art to making it it's all about stretching or resting the gluten first and then stretching it to paper thin and then folding it and pan frying it and what you get is this lovely crisp roti which is the perfect condiment uh, for your curries Now, what's better than having friends? It's having friends who can cook. Uh, so I welcome you, Jackie M, who's the high priestess of Malaysian street food. Uh, so Jackie M's going to cook us some wonderful ji chong fun, I think. Ji chong fun, yeah. that's right. Now tell me what to do. Okay, ji chong fun, uh, <laughs> rice flour rolls, and I need you to make the batter first. Sure. We've got some rice flour there, add Lovely. it in. Some tapioca starch, tapioca flour. Right. You can use corn starch if you want. Throw that in and just some water. Now what consistency are we looking for here? It's going to be very, very runny. And we're going to steam it. And if you're familiar with ji chong fun in Malaysia, beautiful, beautiful, I love like, it. really nostalgic kind of yeah. breakfast dish. I was just going to say, it's what I have for breakfast and the filling, you can have like pork, prawns and you know, like whatever else. You can do that. I like it kind of plain. I like it right. with the, the two different types of sauces. Yep. Now, if you're from Penang up north, you get a kind of like a prawn pasty sauce. We're going to make both types of sauce. If you're down south from Seremban and KL, that sort of stuff, which is where my hood is, you use a kind of like poison type of sauce with that. Oh, so the nice. rice flour rolls are going to be steamed like sheets and this will be very interesting for someone trying this at home. We'll set Done. that aside. Now, there are a couple of things that we got to do beforehand. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make some onion oil and to do that, I just need you to shred some onion for me if you can. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get started on the Penang style sauce first, which uses something called uh, prawn paste. You want to see what it looks like here. Look, it's very, very treacly, uh. like molasses, but a very pungent sort of molasses, okay? I'm just going to throw this into a saucepan with a bit of water, and I'm going to add some kicap manis into right. it, okay? This is just Malaysian sweet soy sauce. Um, do you want me to fry these onions? Yes, please. Let's heat this oil up. Yep. Now, did you adjust the flavour there? Like, um, so, so what are we, we looking for? Sweet yeah. um, sort wanna, of type thing? Now, this prawn paste is really quite pungent, so a little <laughs> goes a long way. You want to kind of like temper the flavour a little bit by adding some sugar, like I said, some kicang okay. earlier sort okay. of thing. So it's looking quite good. I'm just going to let it sit and cool down a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to make the hoisin sauce. Right. Which essentially is hoisin sauce in a jar. Right. And are we I'm adding anything to it? I'm going to add a little it? bit of water to it. And again, we're going to temper the flavour a little bit and just add a little bit of sugar to that as well. Now, tell them what Ji Chong Fan means. OK. Ji Chong Fan in Cantonese, he wouldn't know because he's Hokkien. <laughs> in Cantonese, it literally means uh, Pig's intestine noodles. Okay, now, and, is, Yeah, is and it's, it's interesting. For, so for those of you who've actually had this, um, you can actually see that how it's sort of rolled is very delicate and it's in sort of cylindrical sort of, and it resembles um, a very clean, <laughs> 
version of pig's intestines, <laughs> yeah, I think. So. I doubt if pig's intestines will look that sort of bright white. Yeah. So, is there a reason why we're using, um, like, onion oil? So, do you use, can you use, can you substitute that with garlic oil, maybe? Oh, or? yeah, 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 for sure. You can use garlic oil, you can use onion oil. Right. And there's something you can do, like, on the weekend, you know, fry up a big yeah. bunch of, like, yeah. Crispy onion, you can use the crispy onion as a sprinkle on all your other Asian dishes and then you can use the oil for other cooking. So don't ever throw out the oil if you're making crispy onion yeah. and vice versa, if you're trying to get onion oil, don't throw out the onion, okay? And I love, I love how you cook, Jackie. Like, there's always a tasting and all that sort of stuff. I and, I, and I think that's fantastic. It's, it's, it's very... I think it's essential, isn't it? Like, when we're cooking these sort of dishes, when it comes to balancing flavours and, you know, making sure everything's just right. Yeah, I'm very old school. And I keep telling everyone, I, t I tell everyone, aga, aga, are the two words you want to learn <laughs> from the Malay language. That takes okay? me it's back. actually one word, aga, aga. And not aga, aga, which is uh, aga. Yeah. But aga, aga means guesstimate, okay? Everything is guesstimate. Do you know one of the most frustrating things I have to say cooking with my mother is this, there's no specific measurements. And the, it's all about aga, aga. So you just add a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And I think with her, um, and from her, I learned how to guess and actually balance um, a lot of flavours, which I think is such an art, isn't it? Yeah. Now, we want this to be crispy, yep. is that right? Yeah, okay. you want to get it a little bit brown, so that's going to take a couple of minutes. that looks nice and golden brown. Yep. Now, you want to take the onions out just about a shade or two before they brown completely, because they continue cooking out of the oil for a little bit yet. So you don't want it to be completely brown when you take it out. So, so this these are all great. fairly accessible, like, to do it at home. Like, oh, they're fairly sure. simple ingredients for that's sure. readily available, yeah? Yeah. Now, right. what we want to do, we've got the steamer happening here, just waiting for the water to boil a little bit. And bamboo steamer, you can get them quite cheaply at Asian grocery stores. Yeah. And this, we're improvising a little bit here. This is just a, a cake tin base, okay? So, any particular size, Jackie, that, or just anything that sits comfortably in anything the basket? Anything that sits com comfortably in the basket. Traditionally, we would get like a square tin yeah. for it, but because it's round and it just fits perfectly, we're right. just using this. So, you know. That's the great thing about Malaysian cooking. It's just so incredibly flexible. I know, flexible. it you is, and it's very Experiment forgiving. a little bit. I'm just going to brush a little bit of oil, of oil sure. on this pan here. Are you happy with this? Know. Yeah, and if it needs to be thinner, we can add more water to it and Brilliant. vice versa. And the fact of the matter is, even if you don't have a steamer and if you're not averse to using a microwave oven, I actually usually cook the rice flour rolls in the microwave. I, I, I condone cheating as long as it's good cheating. Good. Yeah. Food. Great minds, great minds. This looks like it's steaming along quite nicely. I'm going to get you to... Oh no, pour okay, pressure. Just a very, very thin layer. And... Uh, the one thing about this is it needs to be perfectly level. I'm going to cover this. And how long for? Two to three minutes, maybe. Beautiful, that huh? That looks really good. Now I'm just going to try and gently <gasps> lift this up and oh fold gosh, it over. Yeah. How about that, huh? So we're going to make another three or four and then we're going to put the sauce over it and present it. I'm gonna get you to snip them up, just like the old Chi Chong Fun guy used to do no. back in the day. Isn't that so cute? I love this. I know, right? It's so exciting. All right. What and are we doing now? We've got the now? sauces. We've got the onion oil. Let's drizzle some of the onion oil over to give it a nice little oh, that glistening smells. look. Doesn't it smell it gorgeous? Great, yeah. Right. And these oils, you can sort of use it for your stir fries as well. Yeah, yeah, you? that's yeah. right. Don't ever throw it out. Exactly. Mm. Okay. So we've got that now. You toasted some sesame seeds earlier, and I I've did. got the hoisin based sauce. Um, now, the last time I was in Penang, it's quite interesting. One particular place actually incorporates some peanut sauce oh, into that's a good... their prawn paste sauce. So that's it's good. Yeah, I know, right? Does it taste yeah, it? yeah. Oh, beautiful, it fantastic. Amazing. 
But of course, we know that here in Australia, the yum cha trolleys actually do use uh, peanut sauce with theirs yeah. as well. So that's the prawn paste base sauce. We're going right. to sprinkle all over. All over. Yeah. We've got some sriracha. <gasps> and let's stick a dollop. So sriracha is quite spicier than your yeah. average chilli sauce. I use them as a dipping sauce for my spring rolls. You're going to try some? I think I should. I think you should too. Yeah, I'm hungry. Thank you. Let's do this. Oh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll do that one. Mm. 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 Oh, really? The rest of it. I'll see you later. Oh no, come back! <laughs> <laughs> Now, definitely worth a try. You know, it might take a couple of goes, but you know, no good things happens instantly. It's, it's such a perfect sort of thing to add to your resume when it comes to your kitchen skills. This is amazing stuff. Yeah. So easy, right? Yeah. Now you never need to go out to uh, your regular Chinese yum cha restaurant. You can make it yourself at home. Rice pudding, it traverses a lot of cultures and in Malaysia it's no different. Um, I used to eat a lot of this, this coconut milk rice pudding and mum used to cook it and it's a childhood memory, uh, one of my favourites really because we have, it's the creaminess of the coconut uh, and lovely sort of tender cooked rice um, but this time we're going to add a little bit um, of Alvin onto it. Uh, we're going to highlight this typical Malaysian fruit um, which we'll talk about in a second. Now we've got some coconut cream. Uh, about three of these cans. Um, I love this particular brand only because the colour of the coconut cream and the coconut milk that I'll be using is slightly off-white and that doesn't mean it's off, it just means there's no added whitening agent in there. Now to that we're going to add some caster sugar. We'll just give that a stir to dissolve the sugar and then we're going to add some short grain rice. Now this is a labour of love. So when you're cooking rice pudding, you understand that there's a lot of stirring involved over low heat, um, but I think it's quite therapeutic. There's something quite hypnotic about just stirring rice pudding and this needs to go for an hour, regular stirring uh, under low heat. Now we've got some persimmons here. So they are very Malaysian, I love them. There's two different types really. There's one that's fairly firm and this one is a little bit ripe and softer. I prefer the ripened version, so the softer version. And I just want to cut one and show you. It's really sweet. It looks like a tomato, but it's orange. Uh, and I think you should try this fruit a lot more because there's something quite delicate about this. Uh, you can find them in any sort of Asian grocery stores. And aside from Malaysians, Southeast Asians, I think the Italians love persimmons as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're making a persimmon salsa, uh, which essentially means some chopped up persimmons with a little bit of mint through it. Now, I don't normally peel the skin of the persimmon because I think um, it's really nice. It gives it that little bit of texture and colour. Now, traditionally, persimmons are quite popular during the Chinese New Year season. Uh, it's a symbol of a golden nugget. Um, so if you're visiting anyone uh, during the Chinese New Year season, if you want to give them um, a bag of fruit, which is actually quite cultural and, 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 um, and respectful if you go to someone's house during the Chinese New Year season to give them some fruit, uh, persimmons uh, and mandarins are the choice because they resemble golden nuggets and it's supposed to give you good luck and good wealth. Now we're just going to put this in a bowl um, and with that we're going to add some mint and we'll just give that a quick chop. Lovely. Just mix that through. And that's our salsa. Now we're going to stir that for, I think that's got another 45 minutes to go, so don't go away too fast. So attend to it every 10 minutes, give it a stir. Um, and then you'll be able to tell when it's ready, when the rice is nice and tender, and you get this lovely creamy texture.
Now have a look at this, this is done. Now we didn't really talk about the quantity before. Um, so what we have here as a guide, 200 grams of rice. So there's three cans of coconut cream and one can of coconut milk. Now that's a rough guide. There are some cases, I've done this many times, where you need to add a little bit more liquid um, just to make sure they absorb very well, which is why, like any good cook or any good chef, um, taste it. So taste it along the way and what you want is this lovely melt in your mouth rice um, and nice sort of creamy texture. Now you can see there's a tinge of brown in there and only because the caster sugar that we added in um, has actually caramelized somewhat. We've got some salsa. And be generous or greedy, whichever way you want to see it. Nothing wrong with a bit of greed. Okay, now how simple is that? Yes, it's a labor of love. Yes, it takes about an hour, but trust me, it's worth it. You can have this in summer or you can have it in winter and it's just perfect. <laughs>